Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. I'm Sam. Today we're having the Lark Symphony Number no. One. Alrighty, so the Symphony Number no. One. This is a Australian Tasmanian, uh, more specifically, distillery. Uh, the Symphony is kind of like a nice way of saying blend. Uh, that's what it is. It's a blend of all of their, well, not all of their, but you know, their some of their finest, you know, malts. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, blending is, you know, a huge part of whiskey and there's nothing wrong with that. Symphony is probably actually a really good word for it, to be honest. Uh, we'll see how that translates. We tried it once after we bought it, but that was actually like a month ago now. And I can't yeah. remember what it tastes like. Yeah, so I think it's, you know, probably only second to like Starwood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whiskey they are very big. Review this. I don't, I don't know, know if they got censored. Someone they would have given it to them. They can't find it in America. They're not there, there yet. I, don't, I think even Starwood, like, it's not... It's still a bit... Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is actually the first one that we've tried from Lark, which is very surprising because, as we said, they're very big within Australia. Um, they've got That's a pretty expensive. good name. They've got... I read... I don't want to go into it because I don't know anything about it, but I have had a little bit of controversy with some of their stuff, with the transparency of their labeling and stuff. Uh, but... I don't think it's anything big. I think it's just kind of the general stuff that uh, distilleries go through yeah. um, when they're labeling stuff, especially when it comes to sourcing and stuff. So I'm not really sure. If you know anything about it, let us know. I did read it somewhere, but I don't know enough about it. Can't remember it. So there's no point going into anything like that. But um, for the most part, everything I've heard about Lark as a distillery overall is yeah, very interesting. interesting. It wasn't cheap. It was what, like no. 130, 150. Yeah, it was about 130, I think you can see yeah. from 140, 130 is a general. And but for 500 ml bottle. 500 ml. <laughs> so that is what you have to consider. Yeah. And that's why like, I like the bottle shape, but it is kind of a deliberate thing that they do to make it look a bit bigger than it is. It is a 500 ml bottle. Um, I still like the bottle design, the label design, all of it's nice, but... Um, yeah, it's 500 mils. You got to pay attention to that when you're paying over $100 for something that is 500 mils. Yeah. That is very typical of Australian whiskey because it's very boutique and stuff, um, small scale, uh, but probably not as small scale as they'd lead you to believe in some cases. No, but um, I mean, from luck, 130 is probably around the cheapest release. I believe so, yeah. None of their stuff is particularly cheap. It's like all 160 ish. Yeah, I think it depends what you get, um, but for the most part, I think, yeah, the Symphony Number no. 1 is the cheap pretty one. much yeah. the most accessible in regards to distribution and price um, out of their whole lineup. I'm getting candied green apple. I was going to say, I'm getting candied, like, extra malt. candied, like, um, lowlands, kind of like scotch. Like, mm. it's got a bit of maltiness, not quite the same that you get from some of the other things, like a Krigeliki, Aberfeldy, or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that, like a Highland, but, like, it's also, it's got some weird... Uh, not weird, but it's got some definite, definite extra fruitiness, like a like a green um, Jolly Rancher kind of like yeah, yeah. apple candiness. A little bit of tartness. What is that? I don't know. It's freaking me out. I didn't get it the first time we tried it. It's literally like lemon it's like drops. A, yeah, or a sour warhead. Yeah, it's got like it's it's like a. A it's zesty, like a hard sour. candy, but with an artificial... Yeah. It's not... It doesn't taste... Uh, so, sorry, it doesn't smell chemically, but it does have like an artificial yeah, yeah. fruit smell, like a candy. Along with that, there's like some nice vanilla notes and some honey. But it's predominantly just like a multi artificial fruit candy. If you dig a bit deeper, there's some dark fruits. Yeah. Like some plums. Sultanas. I actually really like this nose. The nose is nice. It's quite complex, but it's still... Yeah. Simple enough for novices to enjoy as well. A bit of banana on it too. A little bit, yeah. It's weird. It's got a little bit of that butteriness, but nowhere near like you do with Butter, a yeah, lot yeah. of scotches, like that buttered, like um, or dry Irish, yeah, kind yeah. of like bread. It's it's like it's a lot less, but there's a little bit of that. It's only forty point two percent. I was gonna say proof wise, it's a weird one. It's forty point two. Like just go forty. Round it up. You're not around, getting yeah. any yeah. brownie points for it just being above forty when it's that little. There's the malt. It's like a raisin bread. It is like raisin toast, isn't it? Very it's much. It's a good so. shout, yeah. With it's like, like raisin toast, but brown sugar sprinkled on top and then much, toasted. Too much brand malt, brand cereal maltiness, like a that mildewiness. Mm. It's pretty strong. But you're right. There's that sultana 
I think the dark fruit no, helps it. Is, it it yeah. does help. That Sultana brand uh, fruit toast, raisin toast is definitely a shout. That's, yeah, with butter on butter, it. Butter, yeah. Yeah, now that it's that maltiness is coming through strong on the nose now. Yeah, it is. It I wish was, we had other. It was wine. hiding before. Yeah, me too. I want their wine finished ones. I reckon that because Australia does fantastic wines and like wine finished whiskey. That's something that Morris Rutherglen did. Yeah, and they did it really well. So I want to try other stuff because like you have such good access to really high quality, uh, you know, dessert wines and red wines, whatever. Um, and normally that kind of stuff is harder to come by, so they have to charge a bit of a premium. But because it's so accessible here, I'm hoping, you know, realistically you should, well, sorry, not realistically, theoretically, you should be able to get it for cheaper. Yeah. Realistically, probably won't because it's whiskey and it's Australia. The reason I brought up why I wish we had more larks was to see if that maltiness was in all of them. Like yeah. most Australians have malt, but this is pretty extreme. It's very scotchy, yeah. the malt. Yeah. Like, I wonder if some... But, but there is one thing that I'm not getting, and it's the only other Australian thing besides uh, yeah, yeah, besides yeah. Starwood that doesn't have it, is that weird-ass note that we've talked about a bunch of times with the other Australian stuff. It's in literally all of these. Like, super strong in this, and in that. Like, it's it's just this weird... I kind of can't even articulate it. We've, we're yet to put, like, a an actual good descriptor... Yeah, I don't know. Um, to it, but it's like a weird I, artificial... We probably need to dig a bit deeper in the distilleries because there might be some English bloke that's integrating some scotch techniques or something. Because the ones that seem to be mainline big brands... They don't are more seem scotch to have like, it. Yeah, they seem Whereas more the scotch smaller like. ones seem to have this unique... It's this Australian weird, small-scale boutique, common like flavour that we get. It's with all the really small-scale, more... Um, just yeah crafty. More boutique crafties yeah. yeah craft uh whiskies from australia it's this weird pretty acrid like kind of tart fruity note but it also is kind of like eucalyptus oil and i don't know how yeah. to describe it it's weird it's like a tree sappiness it's like the australian balcona's how... note yeah like uh, it's it doesn't taste like the balcona's note but i only mean it's like it's, this pretty, kind of it's really this pr yeah. it's this dominant note that is like consistent between all of them except for lark and except for starwood mm. they're the only ones that we haven't found it in i don't know how to describe the taste and i don't know what's causing it i mean when we first found it in the mountain i thought it was the barrel because everything about the mountain uh, whiskey is so like extreme extreme and, and weird but then we got it in other stuff, which was like pretty tame and chill, except for that one note. And it's just popped up consistently, but I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, honey, malt, fruitiness. I'm, lots of fruitiness, yeah. lots of raisin toast. I reckon if we blind poured an Aberfeldy and I, this, you would struggle as well. I don't know what scotch that it tastes the most like. It's very but scotchy. Very, there is a scotch out scotchy. there that it tastes bang on like, I reckon. I reckon it's Aberfeldy or... Maybe. It's one of those cheaper ones. I don't know, and there's some sherry. It's definitely something my, like lightly sherried. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I could definitely be convinced about that. It does if you're blind pouring it. Yeah, it's more honey malt, <laughs> yeah. but it's definitely pretty. Close. Maybe it's like the Krugalicky or something. Maybe doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter, but yeah, there's the. It's very Scotch-like. It's yeah. definitely been created to the same. I don't know, beat as a scotch is made, which yeah. most people do anyway. That's like very common. I mean, that's how most Australians start, isn't it? But yeah, so look, it's a... I like it. It's a fine start. Is to it like. worth the price? It's not worth the price for us. I do definitely see it being worth the price for some other people who yeah. are more into this kind of like flavor profile. Or into scotch um, yeah. And yeah, I more mean, that's scotch. The flavor profile. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm interested and definitely want to get more from Lark. This one is a bit more of their just kind of like standard, a bit more boring, uh, fast ones, stuff. Yeah. Budget is a bit of a stretch word, them. but <laughs> for them, yeah, for the line. But yeah, so it's interesting and definitely glad to try it. And I want to try a lot more. If you've tried any Lark, uh, any in particular that you reckon we should pick up next, um, then let us know. But What's that other one? Lime burners? I want to try there's that. There's a few. We've, that we've got a, really nice. We've got a kind of get more of our own country's whiskey on the shelves um but yeah so let us know uh and if you enjoyed this episode of everything whiskey leave us like and see future episodes of must maybe consider hitting that subscribe button if you do we'll see you next one cheers, cheers.